everything I ate at a night market in Indonesia. There were so many bakso stalls, so I had to get some, and I added this really sweet soy sauce called kikap manes. And like the elasticy, kind of springy texture of the meatballs goes so well with the slightly chewy, slippery noodles, and the sauces add so much flavor and heat to the broth. It's like comfort food to the max. I also saw this lady cooking martabak, which are these like super fluffy pancakes, and I added bananas and chocolate and peanuts and condensed milk, and she adds extra butter to it. It's like smothered in butter. And oh my gosh, the texture is like slightly squishy, kind of like mochi, but also so soft. And the peanuts add a little crunch. And the whole thing is just like dripping in sweet, creamy, chocolatey goodness. And then I had to get some chicken satay because it just smells so good. It came in this like paper with some rice inside. And I'm convinced that satay sauce is one of the most delicious flavors in the world. It's like nutty and sweet and rich. And the chicken has this great smoky chard flavor too. And they cook the rice and banana leaves. So it's like a really cool texture. And I also got some chapje, which is stir fried vegetables and chicken in this like thick gravy that's savory and also kind of sugary. And I just freaking love bok choy, okay? It's like the perfect sauce vessel. It's like crunchy. And then the chicken was so tender, absolutely delicious. And that's all for today only eating Asian food for a full day in Australia. For breakfast, I went to this spot where they had these huge cotton candy animals and all these different buns. You could pick which one you want. And I got this fried chicken and waffle burger. He was so cute. I didn't even want to eat him. And oh my gosh, the chicken was so crispy and moist. And the waffle was like coated in this crunchy sugar. And it had this creamy, spicy sauce. And this cute little bunny was full of Nutella. It was so warm and gooey. And the bun was so soft like a pillow. And I'm kind of obsessed with the way that Nutella just like coats your mouth in chocolate and then for lunch i went to this indian restaurant that was packed i got to pick two different curries and i got this huge roti that was just like layers of buttery fried goodness and the butter chicken was literally incredible it was like so rich and savory and sweet and just like super complex and the guy said this eggplant masala was like one of the spiciest ones and it didn't hit me at first but then i tried it with the rice and then i felt it oh my gosh thank goodness i got a mango lassi it was so thick and creamy and cold and i also tried my friend samosa that was filled with this soft sweet potato mixture and the crust was so crunchy and then I found a shop selling wheel cakes and I haven't had one since I was in China. I got one with salted egg yolk and taro. You know how much I love taro. It's so thick thick and kind of like vanilla-y and the salted egg yolk wasn't overpowering. The flavors went really well together. Then I got one filled with red beans and custard and the red beans have like the perfect subtle sweetness and the custard was so smooth and soft and that's all for today. Everything I ate on my last day in Australia. For breakfast, I had to have one last Australian meat pie. I love this beef and potato one because the mash is so freaking fluffy and then like the meat filling is thick and rich and warm and of course i added some tomato sauce and it's so like acidic in the best way it pairs perfectly with that rich fatty pie and then the lady said i had to try her custard tart and it was so creamy but also really light at the same time and like not too sweet at all and then the crust had this perfect crunch oh and this was in darwin australia which is known for their saltwater crocodiles and i found a place selling crocodile dumplings the actual dumplings were so good they had this like sichuan plum sauce that was like sweet and spicy. The crocodile meat was interesting. It kind of has the texture of fish, but then it tastes like an earthy chicken. And then I had to get my last frozen Coke from Macca's. Oh, I'm going to miss these so much. They're so fluffy and fizzy. We need them in the States. Come on, McDonald's. And finally, my friends all went to this Mexican place for dinner, but I was getting full, so I just got some desserts. This was a spiced brownie that came with this like sugary, juicy berry compote, and the brownie was the perfect texture, like not too cakey and not too fudgy. I also got the churros which were perfectly crunchy and warm but the chocolate sauce was the best part it had these pieces of gooey brownie in it it was decadent and that's all for today what I eat in a day living on a cruise ship. At breakfast, the mess had these apple crumble cakes. I heated it up and it was so soft and it had this like buttery cinnamony topping and these sweet chunks of apple. They also had this like chocolate cake in a little cup and I gotta be honest, it was really dry. The chocolate ganache on top was good though. And then for lunch, I've been craving these lobster nachos that I got once and they are like smothered in melty cheese and jalapenos and big chunks of tender lobster and the tortilla chips on the ship are my favorite thing ever. They're so crispy. 
super salty too. And for dinner, it was burger night at the mess. And you always got to heat it up so the cheese actually melts a little bit. And oh, they also had leftover cheesecake from tea time. And I added so much mayo and ketchup and a tomato. And the bun was actually like really soft. The burger didn't have a ton of seasoning, but it was a little juicy. But the cheesecake was fire. This raspberry one is my favorite. It's got this crunchy, flaky pastry that's like brulee. It's so sweet. And the chocolate one was like really rich and had a brownie base that was just like intensely chocolatey. And that's all for today. Only eating Chinese food for a full day in Australia. There's so much amazing Asian food in Australia, but I've been craving Chinese. So I started off with these gorgeous xiaolong baos and you bite the corner and then you sip the soup. And then I like to pour some chili oil in the dumpling. And then it's like a flavor explosion with like the juicy pork and the warm spicy chili oil. And then the dough is so soft. I also got some fried dumplings that had this amazing crispy crunchy base and they were filled with this pork and chive mixture. You already know I had to dip it in more chili oil and and they were also like piping hot. Then for lunch, I went to one of the many other East Asian restaurants nearby and I got some Hokkien noodles with prawns and they asked if I wanted it spicy. So of course I said yes. The sauce was also like really sweet though and had this amazing soy flavor. And the prawns were so fresh, like really flavorful. And the egg noodles were perfectly chewy. It also had crunchy bean sprouts and these chunky pieces of egg. And finally for dinner, I got some buns. So this one was filled with braised pork and it was literally so tender. It melted in my mouth and I had this like amazing sugary barbecue sauce that just soaked into that fluffy bun like comfort food to the max and this one was filled with this thick sweet red bean paste and the bread was literally so soft like one of the fluffiest bows I've ever had and the red bean was warm and kind of creamy I was so full and so happy and that's all for today Everything I ate at a cooking class on a luxury cruise ship. Today, the chef let us take his class for free. It's usually like $200 and we made crepes. Apparently, you have to like make a half circle, then fill it in, then like tip the pan. And it's really easy when you know how. And then they topped it with like the thickest, fluffiest whipped cream I've ever had. It tasted like vanilla ice cream. And the crepe was super thin and light and buttery. And next up, we made these super crispy chickpea pancakes and topped it with this like feta arugula salad. And oh my gosh, it was so crunchy, but the center was almost creamy. I also added so much salt and pepper, so it was really flavorful. And then we made a frittata souffle, which I've never heard of, but you bake this like milk-soaked brioche and eggs and cheese in a tiny pan. It also had sauteed artichokes and onions, and the texture is really unique. It's like kind of spongy and fluffy. And finally, what I was most excited to make, a chocolate lava cake. Apparently, you barely use any flour. It's mostly just like eggs and chocolate and butter, and you pour a little batter in the ramekin, then you add like a chocolate ball and the rest of the batter. And just look at this beautiful little river of lava. Oh my gosh. Oh, and this was the chef. He was so cool. And they gave us more of that amazing whipped cream. The edges were like perfectly crunchy. And then the center was so gooey. It was warm and rich. And I don't know if it just tasted better because I had so much fun making it, but this is one of the best cakes I've ever had. And that's all for today letting locals decide what I eat for a full day in Papua New Guinea. This is Effie. I asked him what his favorite food was and instead of just telling me, he took me around this huge market and told me all about the local cuisine. First up, he got a coconut and squeezed some lime into it. He said it's called Island Sprite and oh my gosh, it was so sweet and the lime added so much flavor. Really refreshing too. And then he said to try breadfruit, which I've never seen before, but they cook it in coconut milk, which makes it kind of like creamy and soft like a potato. It tastes sort of similar to taro. It's got more flavor than like a regular potato, but it's not as sweet as a sweet potato. He also said to try sack sack, which is made out of sago palm trees and banana leaves and coconut milk, and it's steamed in banana leaves. It's kind of sweet, but it has this really cool like jelly texture, kind of like a giant coconut banana gummy. And then he said his favorite food are these coconut boiled chestnuts, and you guys, they were literally so good. They're like really rich and kind of peanutty and so filling. And then we wandered all the way to the other side of the market, and we found this guy selling these like donuts, so they're fried balls of this sweet fluffy dough and they're super soft inside and they have that like amazing deep fried crispy outside and last but not least he said to try the bananas and wow they were literally so sweet like candy and so soft they just melt in your mouth some of the best fruit i've ever had oh also effie leads his own tours so if you're ever in new guinea make sure to hit him up and that's all for today 
A day in the life of a singer on a luxury cruise ship. First thing this morning, I had a library sweep, which basically means we just like put all the guest books away for them. And today was my duty day, so I have every duty, not just one or two. Next up, I headed to the sports locker to get supplies for the day. This is where we keep all the games that we play with the guests and they can win points that they cash in later for prizes. And I got my little clipboard to sign all of the guests up, but nobody came. So I just entertained myself for a little bit and then eventually I gave up and I headed upstairs to grab a snack at the pool grill. I got butter pecan ice cream, which kind of had like a little carrot caramel flavor too and cookies and cream that was packed with crunchy oreos and then it was back to work i got all the supplies to restock the sports deck so basically since our ship is pretty small the performers also do the duties of a sports staff so we have to like replace the dirty golf balls and stuff like that and then i headed back to my cabin to change because we have a show tonight oh and so this is the backstage area and then this is the girls dressing room which is actually pretty spacious because it has to fit all seven of us and the costumes and here's another little clip from the show Should I scream and shout? Should I speak alone? Anyway, that's all for today. Things on a six star luxury cruise ship that just makes sense. So it's been called the most luxurious ship ever built. It costs about $450 million and there are over 2,500 different pieces of artwork, including two Picasso prints. And there's also boutique shops where you can spend literally all of your money. Like this watch is half a million dollars. They also have these like exclusive clubs where like no one is allowed. I've never actually been in there. And for onboard activities, you can take a cooking class in our state of the art kitchen, or you can go see a show in the theater where we have five different full-length productions that's the most out of any ship in the company and of course you can eat in fact if you got eleven thousand dollars a night you can have your own private dining room where no one else is allowed as well as a private bar and butler and everything is included from the lobster tail to the fancy bevs to valet laundry to 24-hour room service and even the excursions are included so you can take tours to petra to abu dhabi to the dead sea and some guests stay on for months like we've had people with us from turkey to australia and anyway, that's all for today. Only eating at McDonald's for a full day in Indonesia. They had so many interesting things I've never seen before, like this black currant McFlurry with Fruit Loops and the berry sauce was like really tart and kind of tasted like cherries. And the Fruit Loops added this perfect fruity crunch. And I also tried this spicy ayam goreng or fried chicken. And oh my gosh, it was literally so crispy and juicy, like the best chicken I've ever had at a McDonald's. And it was so spicy, like just packed with seasoning. And it came with these scrambled eggs that added this like soft creaminess. And then I also tried their black currant fruit tea that wasn't too sweet at all. It had this like really nice refreshing berry flavor. And later I had to come back because there was so much to try. So they had a chocolate marshmallow pie. It was so short and round. And oh my gosh, the chocolate sauce was like a melted chocolate bar, like so smooth. And the marshmallow was really fluffy, but the crust was like the best part. It might've been the crunchiest, most tender McDonald's pie I've ever had. It just melted in my mouth. I also tried their nasi uduk, which was topped with this fire indonesian chili sauce that i was not expecting to be so wildly spicy like when i say this is one of the spiciest foods i've ever had it also had this like sour tartness that just made the heat hit even harder like my mouth was on fire and finally i tried their ayam richa richa which is also like really spicy but had a lot of sweetness too and the fried chicken has the perfect crunch and that's all for today